What is going on to all my Russian Doll fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files, Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix series review and today we're breaking down the return of one of my favorite shows on Netflix three years ago and that is season two of Russian Doll which will be making its return on Netflix on April 20th. I did get the opportunity to check it out early and I'm so excited to share my thoughts with you all on this new season and I'm going to let you know by this review. Is it better than season one? Is it on par with season one? Or is it some steps down? We're going to talk about that and so much more all in this spoiler-free review. Before we get into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns, and live streams, we'll come and join the community today by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And as you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this early spoiler-free review of season two of Netflix Russian Doll, we'll make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also share this review but more importantly in the comments let's talk all things Russian Doll from your thoughts on season one did you think we need a season two and more importantly once you sat down and watch all seven new episodes of season two what did you all think from your pros your cons favorite moments favorite episodes what were some things that didn't work for you all in this new season and also do you want a season three? Let's talk about that in the comment section. So I can't believe how fast time flies. I can't believe it's been three years since season one. And I did a review on season one, which you all can check out, but I'll just sum it up. I love season one. It was such a hit surprise. I love the characters, the nuance. I am a sucker for sci-fi. So taking that existential crisis, mixing it in through a sci-fi lens, I thought it was just such a great show. I'm going to be honest though. I didn't think we needed season two, but here we are talking season two. And again, spoiler free thoughts, just my thoughts on the story, performances. If I thought it was better than season one, do I want to see more of this story and the characters? That's what we're going to tackle in this review. So I'm going to leave time codes in the description below. Again, spoiler free review, starting now with my positives. So sci fi. Big fan of it, especially when it comes on the big screen or in this case, the small screen. And normally when you get a follow up to a great season one of a sci fi show, the I guess the natural progression for things is, OK, we got to get bigger. We got to get more ridiculous. We got to get more characters in the mix. I'm happy to say that not only does season two dive deeper into the characters, but it still manages to get bigger, but not lose focus of what made season one so special, which is the character study, the character arcs, the narrative at hand, the sci fi at hand. So getting into my pros with that bigger, ambitious story. We're not just in New York this time around in season two. And if you all saw the trailer, you can kind of get a sense of that. But we're not just in New York. We are traveling to different countries in this new season. I'll just say that. But not just new countries. We know we're diving into time travel in this new season. We're going to different decades. And just touching on the production here, I want to applaud the producers and the set designers and the costume department and the makeup department because when we go to these different countries and we go to these different eras, it was just, it, it felt like we were in that time period. It, wardrobe being the way people talked, the way they carried themselves, the life and the world that we were in as far as like the time that we're in and some of the controversial stuff that was going on during those different decades. So I really applaud how, again, it was bigger, it was bolder, it was more ambitious. But then going back to what I mentioned about the focus on the characters, this, I didn't know there was more <laughs> to Nadia's character. And we knew, we learned all the stuff with her mom and her relationship with Ruth and her best friends and the Johns in the world and all this stuff. But, and also, of course, Alan. But this show and this season goes back in time and it uses that time travel, which again, just to give you a little more perspective of this story, we are four years removed from season one. So we know at the end of season one, she turned 36, which means four years later, she's what? 40 years old. And if you all remember season one, there's an important number and significance of that 40 year old mark, especially when it comes to her mother. So getting back into diving deeper into this character. And by the way, Natasha Leone, I've been a fan of hers for a very long time, dating back to the American Pies of the World and just seeing her in Orange is the New Black. And I've been following her outside of movies. And I know she's d tackled some demons. She's had some personal issues with addiction and health issues. And it's this character, Nadia, man, it, to me, and I, and I might be wrong by all accounts, but I think that Natasha Leone pours some of that trauma, some of that life experiences in this character and just uses this as like a framing and like a reflection of like, this is the stuff I went through and this is the stuff I learned and how I want to implement it to this amazing character, which again, going back to thoughts on season one, 
it took a while to get used to that character. She was very selfish about herself, just very just kind of self-indulging and alcoholic and just didn't seem to have much promise and was kind of annoying at points. But again, with season one did so beautifully, it lets you know how she got to that point, why she's the way she is, and just seeing her develop in her arc by the end of season one and transitioning into this new season, diving deeper into that trauma. And this is a theme that was just so beautifully illustrated in this new season, generational trauma. And we see it from her relationship with her mom in this season and getting more of that backstory and kind of understanding of why her mother had her mental issues and some of the stuff that her mother did in season one with this time travel wrinkle, maybe there's some things that Nadia does that maybe had influenced her mother and other characters without getting into the minutia of it all. But you get that relationship with the mother in this season and seeing that generational uh, relationship. We even go back to her mother's Vera's relationship with her grandmother. And it's just seeing those three generations displayed so beautifully from the actress's perspective, from a mother perspective, from the theme of trying to fix your past. Again, being a big sci-fi time travel fan that I am, which by the way, if you all, I always try to find a way to let people know about the show. Speaking of Netflix and time travel, the greatest time travel show of all time is uh, Dark on Netflix. But as I digress, seeing her using this time travel as a device to fix the past, to help fix the present and the future and how that can affect the past, the present and the future was just so fascinating in the way that as Russian Doll does, it has its own spin on time loops, time travel, and how if you do something in this era, how it can affect people in that era and how it can affect your present and your future was so fascinating. But I just want to go back to again Natasha Leone and her performance in this season. Is something beautiful. It is something that I was just in complete awe with. She is so complex. Again, there are moments where I love the character. There are moments that I hate the character because, again, there are just so many moments where she's just selfish and she's just so about what it can do to benefit me. And But, again, she has the life lesson she learned in season one that makes her a little bit more redeemable. But, again, she does some things where you're just like, Nadia, why are you doing this? Again, Natasha Leone. she, again, I feel like this is a personal character. This is something that she has, you know, shedded all the trauma off from her past, implemented in this character, and she does it in such a beautiful way. And also, there are the supporting characters that I love from season two that have their own arcs as well, such as Alan. But, again, I think this is just a true testament to Natasha Leone and her performance in season one and this character that she just seems to love and can really connect with and I just really enjoyed the narrative the lessons the mistakes the regrets the all the stuff that she learns in this season and the relationship with her mother the relationship with her surrogate mother and Ruth and all the different dynamics seeing Ruth at a different light and seeing the heart the compassion the love that Ruth has for her and, and getting a little bit of her backstory it was all just so well woven into this new season and I really want to touch on again the focus and the theme of generational trauma what it means to love someone what it means to care for someone what it what what you can't go back into the past and fix things because you can might affect the future and the present so I just loved all that story all the time travel that we get here the beautiful set designs being in those different eras and just seeing it through the lens of this crazy ass awesome character and Nadia it was just such a great journey to go on and I just can't applaud enough the writing was so on par this season but I will say too before I transition into my negatives that second half of the season to me like three and up are just great television it's just such a great way to display how time travel affects this character and what it affects with the other characters and just the family narrative and the family trauma and again knowing how important Krugerrands, which were you know mentioned in season one how important they are in season two how important the train is it's just so many things so many easter eggs so many meticulous things this show does so beautifully that i was just a big fan of but i do have some criticisms that i want to mention here with this season two number one we all know how important and how key Alan was in season one from episodes four and on when we see his perspective how he got stuck stuck in his time loop how you know obviously him and Nadia became friends and and all that different stuff for me personally I really enjoyed Alan's what they tried to do with Alan in this season two but unfortunately I thought the execution 
kind of felt forgotten about um, without getting into the minutia, as you would imagine, because he is a big character in season one. He does get involved with the time travel in season two and his story that he goes through from his perspective of going back in the past and experiencing the past uh, through someone that was uh, a part of his family tree. I was so fascinated by that, but it felt like the show really kind of wrapped it up really quickly and really didn't dive deeper into the themes and, and, and all the things that it had to offer during that perspective of time, during the person of time, and just it was so much nuance and so much to just explore in that plot. I just feel like it was so underwhelming and just didn't really have much to say it is really the biggest thing, which is so disappointing because, again, I'm a fan of the Allen character. I thought that he was so integral to season one, and I feel like they really dropped the ball on that plot, what it could have meant to the show and what it could have meant to that character. And also, one of the things I loved about season one was the colorful supporting characters, Maxine, you know, her best friend. You know, Ruth is very much involved in this new season, but I feel like this new season didn't have as many colorful new supporting characters as it did in season one. And even though season one supporting characters really didn't have that much things to do in this season two without giving too much away. I was really kind of disappointed because I love those supporting characters, but a lot of them didn't really, wasn't too involved in this season. Again, I this, I love that we focus on Nadia and her past and her family and all that stuff, but I, I, I missed the relationship she had in season one and not being able to explore it more in a season two, which also, another criticism, season two takes a bit to really find its footing and find its narrative. I mean, we jump right into it after the first episode, but I'm like, okay, this seems a bit repetitive in a certain extent, which I'll talk about here in a second, but it took for me into the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way to the seventh episode to really find this footing, to find this narrative, to really get into the minutia, into the mindset of this themes and the and the tone of this new season. So it did take about two, well, to the third episode for me to really get invested in this new time travel story. And then again, I mentioned it just a second ago, it felt a bit repetitive. And I mean that by, you know, we were, we dealt with the time loop in season one. Now we're dealing with time travel. And the thing that felt a bit repetitive is I felt like all the stuff that Nadia learned in season one, yes, she grew from season one, but there were still moments where I'm just like, wait, why is she repeating some of this same selfish decision, same selfish nature that she had in season one? especially after what she went through season one, why is she hasn't really fully understood some of these rules and some of these things that she's affecting by the decisions she's making in this new season? So it was very kind of frustrating in a sense was, I don't feel like the character, she kind of went, you know, 10 steps forward and then 15 steps backwards at the time, which was kind of frustrating in a, in a writing narrative character growth department. And then another thing that I will mention to kind of wrap up this review and my criticisms we all know season one, the biggest thing that really sold me and kept me on the edge of my seat was the mystery box. Why is she keep having a time loop? Why does she keep dying? What does she have to learn to kind of end this time loop and then end this horribleness? Season two, there's not much of a mystery because they let you know pretty early on why we're in time travel, how we're dealing with time travel, what she's trying to accomplish. So there's not much of a mystery box. Not saying it's not appealing, not engaging, not entertaining, but it wasn't a miss that sense of mystery that I was missing from season one in this new season. So those are main pros and cons that I have in this new season. Before we get into my overall thoughts and give you my thoughts on if it's better, if it's worse, do we need more? If you haven't already, make sure to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments, and so of course, subscribe to the channel. Overall, I was thoroughly entertained by this new season. I love how deep we dove into Nadia's character, her family history, the generational trauma from her mom's perspective, from her grandma perspective at the same time still having a bigger season a more ambitious season diving deeper into what time travel looks like in this world in this narrative so all that stuff to me was really the highlight of the show and just seeing the growth from the character even though at times going back to my criticisms I feel like there was a regression in the character not that many life lessons learned from season one and also just not having the same colorfulness from the supporting characters as well as Alan being a bit of an underwhelming character but at the end of the day, this is still one of the best shows that Netflix has to offer. I personally don't think we need a season three. Like, I didn't think we needed season two, but I still very much enjoyed a season two. So if they can find another creative sci-fi element with, uh, I don't know, we did time travel, we did time loops. What else can they tackle? 
I have enough faith in these creators that they, that they can do something creative, but I don't need a season three if that answers my own question. I don't need it, but I would welcome it if they could find something creative to do. So overall, I personally think season one is better, but season two is still a great follow-up to what I think is a great series all in all. If it's just two seasons or if they explore more, that's my thoughts on season two of Russian Doll. So let me know again once you've seen it. Pros, cons, favorite moments, least favorite moments. Do you want a season three? Let's talk about that in the comment section. Thank you all for watching this review. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great day. Just a friendly reminder before you leave to like, share, comment, subscribe, and come and join the community. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel. Check out my other content. We'll catch you all on the next video.